I want to tell you about the history of hoodies. You wear hoodies, I wear hoodies. At one time or another, we've all worn hoodies. They're comfortable, stylish, and really just the best. But did you know the earliest incarnation of a hoodie can be traced back to ancient Rome and ancient Greece? I mean, you could argue monks in the Middle Ages had hoodies. In the 17th century, ladies would wear hoodies to hide themselves when going to meet their lovers. Then, of course, there's the dark side of it, where hoodies were essentially used to represent death in the Grim Reaper or even an executioner. Now, today's hoodie, the modern hoodie, what we all recognize as a hoodie, traditionally made of cotton with a marsupial pouch, drawstrings, and of course, a hood, was introduced in the 1930s by Knickerbocker Knitting Company, now known as Champion. It was meant to keep athletes warm, but it was so strong and durable and functional that it was later adopted by workmen. And then in the 80s and 90s, it was adopted by hip hop, uh, punk music, uh, skateboarders, and hell, even graffiti artists looking to save face while vandalizing the sides of buildings, bridges, or trains. Hoodies became a source of anonymity. If you could hide your face, you could hide who you were. And who knows, maybe at first it, it, it started off with detestable motives, but I believe it today to be a more introverted intent to allow someone to be with themselves in their moment. And being raised in the streets, that's, that's really all you can ask for. Unfortunately, however, hoodies have been deemed a threat to the status quo. So much so that in some places, such as, you know, nightclubs, is not part of the dress code. Which, you know, it can be understandable when you consider that whenever a crime is reported, the description of the person often involves a hoodie. So then what happens when you put a young black man in a hoodie? People, white people, are already frightened of you threatened by you. Your strength, your poise, your power already scares them. So how much more profound is the fear of a young black man in a hoodie? But I'm not black. What did you say? I'm I'm mixed. Not, I'm not actually black. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you handle this one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Look at me and look at your father. Yeah, you're mixed. But what does society see? Look at a glass of milk. It's white. But what happens when you add chocolate? Even if it's just a little bit, is it still white? I'm a lit kid. No, it's chocolate milk. And that's all some people will see. So the point is, it doesn't matter how you see yourself. As far as society is concerned, you're black. And with the hoodie on, you're a threat. Outside these walls, outside our protection, when you leave this house and you put that hood up, you're a target for hate. And all your mother and I are trying to do is to prepare you for that, to get you to understand the reality, which is that in our society, not all men are equal. A white man can go down the street with his hoodie on, terrorize a neighborhood, and return home to his family, no questions asked. But we do not have that luxury. They will look for any reason to take you out a hoodie, a cell phone, a wallet. So we constantly have to adjust, have to adapt in order to survive as black men and women. I don't say this to scare you. I don't, I don't want you to walk in fear. I don't, I really don't. All I want is for you to come back home. I want to tell you about the history of headphones. <laughs>